In this video, we will finally learn about the clustering step itself. We will use the principal components that we gained in the previous step in the dimension reduction part to cluster the cells. We will also take a look how to visualize the clusters using the TSNE or UMAP, which are dimension reduction methods. We learned about TSNE and UMAP in the previous videos. We will take a quick look on those as well, but we will mostly focus on clustering. So the main purpose of the clustering step is to divide the cells into distinct groups based on their gene expression. As you remember, our data is big and complex. It has lots of cells, lots of genes and lots of noise. So instead of using genes for the clustering, we use the principal components. So we also need a clustering method that can cope with these things. We are using a graph-based clustering which means that we're building this kind of graph where each of these nodes represents cells and these edges or the lines between the nodes represent the similarity between the cells. The graph is built using the shared nearest neighbor approach and when we cut the graph into these clusters we use this Louvain algorithm. Let's take a closer look. The clustering in Surat starts by identifying k nearest neighbors of each cell using Euclidean distance in principal component space. So let's imagine that these dots are now our cells in the principal component space, meaning that if we chose 10 principal components to continue the analysis with, our principal component space is 10 dimensional. So each dot here is a cell, and we start identifying k nearest neighbors for all of these cells. So if you look at the red cell here, and decide that k is 3, these three cells here would be the nearest neighbors for the red cell. In reality, the default for the k value is 30, so we're looking at 30 neighbors in reality. Now to simplify, we only use 3. Next, we rank the neighbors based on distance and do the same step for all the different cells. So here we're looking at the blue cell and we can see that these three cells here are its nearest neighbors. Then we move on to the building of the graph and there we use this shared nearest neighbor approach which is weighing these edges between the cells based on their ranking. So for example here we draw an edge as these two cells share this neighbor here. This part of the clustering process is in the find neighbors function in Surat. And it has one parameter, which is the number of principal components to use. You remember from the previous video how we determined the dimensionality of the data. So the number of principal components given as a parameter determines the dimensionality of our principal component space here. When we have built the whole graph, so determined all the edges between the different cells here, we use an algorithm to cut this full graph into subgraphs or clusters by optimizing modularity. This Louvain algorithm is used by default. This step is included in the find clusters function in Surat, and there's one parameter for that, which is the granularity. Let's take a closer look at the parameters for this step. The first parameter is the number of principal components to use. You learned in the previous video how to decide how many components to include. But you can experiment with different values, and if you're not quite sure, use a higher number rather than a smaller one. The other parameter is the resolution for granularity, which is sort of a one parameter to rule them all. You can try increasing the value, which would lead to more clusters. Values between 0.4 and 1.2 are typically good for single cell data sets of around 3000 cells. So if you have more cells than 3000, you can try with a little bit higher resolution. So after the clustering step, we want to visualize the clustering result. And for that, we use dimension reduction method, TSNE or UMAP. We learned about this in the previous video. The plot resulting from TSNE or UMAP is gray by default, but the tool colors it based on the clustering result from the previous step. So your job here is to check how well the groupings 
found by TSNE or UMAP matches with the cluster colors. So for example here, it's matching very nicely. The input data for TSNE or UMAP is the same principal components as you use for the clustering. So if you chose to use 10 principal components there, those 10 are used here as well. The visualization step has two parameters. The point size for the plot, so how large dots you want here. And the second parameter is the perplexity for TSNE. Perplexity means the expected number of neighbors. If you have very few cells, we recommend setting this to a bit lower number. As you may remember from the previous video, there are certain differences between TSNE and UMAP. TSNE is specialized in local embedding, so the distance between the clusters is not meaningful. So whether this group would be here or further away here doesn't really matter. UMAP, however, preserves more of the global structure than TSNE. So here, also the distance between the groups tell a little bit more. The last step in this pipeline is detecting and visualizing the marker genes for the clusters. This step happens in the same tool as the clustering and visualization of the clusters.